All right, so today we start lecture 16, uh, and this covers uh, identifying state conflicts and uh, kind of disambiguating these conflicting states with uh, a, a pair of uh, transitions on kind of newly created variables. Uh, and so this, this process is state variable insertion. So, so far we have started with a kind of CHP uh, specification. And uh, this lecture, we're looking at a CHP specification that receives uh, a token on L and then uh, kind of replicates that token twice on the R channel. We've taken this CHP uh, specification in the past and we've, we've turned it into handshaking expansions uh, and we've reshuffled it into a, a legal HSE that we can then execute through HSE sim. We've also added reset rules and a couple of other things. And then we use HSE sim to generate the elaborated uh, predicate space, right? The effective predicate space. And now this is kind of like where we left off. So we can take these effective predicates and we're going to run into a problem in, in generating production rules for this process. Uh, in particular, when we look at uh, a pair of places for separate transitions, and we try to use the encoding in those places to you know, create production rules, then it actually won't generate a valid set of production rules, right? You'll find that uh, some transitions are starting to be triggered where they shouldn't be. Uh, and this is because uh, two of our state encodings aren't kind of disambiguated. They, they, there isn't enough information in the predicate space to separate the behavior of those two states. All right, so if we, we take a look at this example, we've got uh, our streaming buffer and uh, right now, the state preceding L.E down is conflicting with the state preceding R.R .R down, right? So the state preceding L.E down, we know that L.R is high, L.E is high, and R.R is high. In the state preceding R.R .R down, we know that L.R is high, L.E is high, R.R is high, and R.E is low. R.E could be low or high in the state before L.E down. And so both of these transitions are now, because of this conflict, able to fire uh, in the state preceding the other, right? And we don't want this to happen because that would violate our handshake expansion. So we need to somehow fix this by inserting kind of new transitions into this HSE. Uh, so there is a tool uh, that's part of the Haystack called HSE Encoder or HSC Enc, and um, it can be used to identify state conflicts in a given HSC. And so if you run HSC encode-c uh, on the HSC, you'll get a printout of the set of conflicting states, uh, conflicting transitions, right? So this is saying that R dot R down will fire at the semicolon before L dot E down. And this is saying that L dot E down will fire at the semicolon before R dot R down and at the semicolon before the guard uh, on R dot on R dot E low, right? So this will fire here and here, and this will fire here unintentionally. So if we want to disambiguate these two states, we need to basically divide up the state space into pieces uh, using a transition and cut those arcs. Right, uh, so we're going to have one transition up here, and we're going to have one transition down here. And so, what it'll look like in the HSC is we've got this transition on R to R down firing at the semicolon, and we've got this transition on L dot E down firing at either this semicolon or this semicolon. And we're going to put in a transition on a state variable called V two. And that's gonna be reset low to begin with. And then it's gonna go high right after R dot R down. And it's gonna go low right after R dot R down the second time. 
Okay, so that should disambiguate those two states. So we, when, once we've inserted this state variable, then our we need to re-elaborate the state space. And we've got these two new transitions, uh, one on V2 going high here and one on V2 going low here, right? Following our previous, previously positioned red box. The problem is when we go to re-examine the state conflicts, we get two new ones. Right, and these weren't in the previous specification, so why, right? We're seeing now V2 up, firing where it shouldn't, right before R dot R up, and we're seeing R dot R up, firing where it shouldn't, right before V2 up. So it turns out, if we go back to our original uh, HSE, pre-state variable insertion, that there weren't conflicts on these because there wasn't a transition happening in this state. I mean, this is a guard. And so there wasn't any conflict to be had here, right? Uh, there, there's no transition to jump over and fire in another state. But in adding that transition on V2, we've added a transition dependent on that state. And so this kind of brings up the idea of state suspects, right? And state, state suspects basically show all the different possible states that could create conflicts. Should there be an assignment right out? Right? And in particular, if we look closely at this list, we'll find a this state suspect which is exactly the pair of states that had created the conflict. And so when we insert the new state variable, we get that conflict. Does that make sense so far? Okay. So we solve this by first trying to minimize the number of new conflicts we create with state variable insertion. And then by iterating on state variable insertion, while there are still conflicts to be resolved, right? And so we've got this new pair of conflicts and we're going to insert a new state variable transition that cuts those two arcs. And in doing so, we're adding, so, so here's the existing conflict, right? The new conflict that we're working with, R dot R is firing in this semicolon and V2 up is firing in this semicolon. And so we add in a state variable, deconflict those. And now when we run HSC encoder dash C, it doesn't identify any conflicts. Yes, could you um back to the slides where we first found the second yeah, the second conflict? If we didn't have a sync to flag it, like we're just looking at it in another context on our own, is there anything which stands out as to where we should be looking for potential conflicts? So if we go back to the first state conflict, you're looking at these state encodings and you're seeing if they exclude each other, right? And so you have to compare every trans, you know, the state before every transition with every other possible state in the same process that is not in parallel and verify that they are mutually exclusive of each other. Okay, so it's a mutual exclusivity constraint. So let's get into some examples. Here I am in lecture 16. Let's start up the command line interface and Let's take a look at example one. So this is the example from the lecture. Uh, we need to work through the steps to deconflict this HSE. And so we can take a look at what conflicts exist by running HSE encoder dash C, E1.HSE. And we can see the result here. Uh, however, 
we've also integrated this application into uh, Vim, if that's what you're using. So if we open up e1.hsc and use the command colon C, uh, then you'll find that uh, we can get the same result uh, right inside Vim and start working through it. OK, so we've got two conflicts, one uh, between r.r down and l.e down, and one between l.e down and r.r down, right? So they, they kind of conflict back and forth between each other. So r.r down with t7 is right here. l.e down is right here. Effectively, r.r down can end up firing uh, before l.e is lowered, which is um, a result of this transition here. So we need to insert uh, seat variable transitions in order to try to separate uh, that firing. So let's let's start with uh, v0, v0 down, and we're going to place a transition right after r dot r down, v0 up. So this is after the first r dot r down, and then place it after the second r dot r down, v0 down, in order to kind of cut those two uh, cases in half, right? So now uh, L dot E goes down only when um, V0 is high. And when V0 is low, we don't, it, it doesn't get lowered. Okay, so that's our first uh, state variable insertion. Let's rerun the conflict checker. And we have two new conflicts, right? So uh, R dot R up can fire before V0 up, and V0 up can fire before R dot R up. Right, so this is the uh, same sequence of new conflicts that we saw in the uh, in the lecture. So we need to uh, break those up. So r dot r up is here and here. Right. So basically, we're saying that this can end up firing before v zero up here. Okay. So let's do that. Let's create a new state variable uh, v one. And we're going to call it, uh, we're going to initialize it with v1 uh, up. Actually, let's do v1 down. And then we have to deconflict effectively. We have to break up this and this transition. And so let's do v, uh, v1 uh, up, v1 up here. And let's do v1 down here. Right? So. Now v1 is low for this r dot r up, and it's high for this one. Right, breaking the breaking those two uh, that conflict. So let's re rerun our conflict checker, uh, and that didn't do it. So we have no, nope, we, we forgot to write the. So we have to in between each run of of uh, the conflict checker, we need to rerun. Or we need to rewrite the file so uh, and save it. So now that we've saved the file with our new uh, state variable state variables inserted, uh, we can see that there are no more conflicts in this HSE. All right, so let's check. Um, let's try example two. So example two, we are now given an a, a, a CHP to turn into HSE and then uh, do uh, kind of deconflict it, and so. Our first step is to uh, we can we can take this uh, CHP and uh, do some reshuffling in order to get it into a more reasonable uh, HSE, right? So step one would be noticing that R zero or R send zero here can be pulled out of this uh, conditional statement, right? Because in both branches of the conditional statement, we first send zero down R. OK, so uh, that would mean pulling it out here, r send 0, and then removing it from here. OK. And then uh, we have a choice, right? Uh, depending upon the interaction of the environment, we actually can note that uh, our send on 0 will happen regardless of whatever value is received from L. And so we can actually kind of preempt the, the receive on L with a send on R. Now, this, this is only valid if it's kind of allowed by our environment, i.e., our environment is, um, is able to do the pre-processing on the output of R, uh, assuming that there isn't 
uh, ever a an input on L. So let's switch these two and make and and allow our environment to do pre-processing on that uh, token. Okay, so now we have our HSC. Let's expand it. Or sorry, we have our CHP. Let's expand it. So our send on uh, our send false is going to be wait for r dot e uh, raise r dot f up wait for not r dot e and rate and lower r dot f. Our receive on l is then going to be uh, you know wait for l dot f or you know l dot f receive into let's say uh, lowercase l. Right, so l dot f up if l dot t l dot t up and then uh, lower l dot e then uh, wait for our input requests to be neutral and not l dot t and then raid l dot e and then we need to send on r again so uh, if uh, the uh, internal variable that we saved is false, then we send r.f. Uh, if it is true, then we say send r.t. Uh, we need to make sure to wait for r.e. And then we wait for r.e to go low and lower our output requests. OK. Let's uh, reshuffle this a bit. So uh, we know that this is going to be uh, effectively a half buffer. So let's uh, let's do that that work to turn this into a half buffer. Uh, following the last lecture, we can put r dot e directly into the uh, into the guard for l, and then rather than raising uh, lowercase l, we can we can save that directly to r so that. Uh, interleaves that in. And then after lowering our L dot E, we can uh, add our, our guard for R dot E um, while waiting for the neutrality of L. And then after that, we can put our uh, neutrality assignment uh, before we raise L dot E. OK, so that's a weak condition half buffer reshuffling. So then we're left, left with this HSC. We have a send on R, and then we have a weak condition half buffer shuffling between L and R. All right, so let's make our environment. Um, we need to create a source on, on L. So wait for, so we send uh, L dot F. Right, we use our, our uh, non-deterministic uh, selection trick to to send either L.F or L.T randomly, followed by uh, waiting for L.E to go low. Then we uh, uh, make our output requests neutral. So L.T and L.F down, and then we wait for L.E to be ready again. On the sync side, we can we need to wait for a request, so r dot f or r dot e, then lower r dot e, then wait for the request to be neutral, r dot f, and not r dot t, then raise the enable. OK, let's do our resets. So uh, we reset our source with both output requests low, and we assume that our, uh, imp our output enable is uh, reset high. For our uh, main process here, we uh, start by assuming the, uh, we start by setting our output request low and our input enable high. And then we assume that our input requests are low and that our output enable is high. For our sync, we start with our uh, input enable being high, and then we assume that our input requests are both low. Okay, uh, and then finally we need to uh, specify our, our isochronic regions. 
set up the parallel composition. And we're good to go. All right, so let's uh, check this in HSC Sim. And it seems to look okay. No instabilities. Now let's check this in the HSC encoder, colon C. And we have a few conflicts. So our, we have uh, our first transition on r.f is conflicting with our uh, transitions uh, in our buffer. So, so this transition high is conflicting with these two transitions high. And this transition low is conflicting with uh, the state before L dot E low. Uh, and then this transition high is conflicting with our R dot F up here. And L dot E down here is conflicting with R dot F uh, up here. OK, so we need to insert state variables to uh, deconflict these. So let's start with our transition on r.f and our transition on l.e. All right, so let's create a state variable. Uh, and we're going to start with it low. Or sorry, we're going to start with it high, so v0 up. Uh, and then right after r.f, we're going to be we're going to lower it, so v0 down. And right after LE down, we're going to raise it. So V0 up. And so that'll break apart uh, this transition and these two transitions, right? So uh, we only raise R.F up when V0 is high. And when V0 is low, we can we uh, use the value uh, incoming on L. OK, write the file and rerun the conflict checker. And that's eliminated some of our conflicts, but we still have two more, right? So r.f down is able to fire uh, here on l.e down, right? And uh, l.e down is able to fire back in r.f. So we need to deconflict these two, which means that uh, we need to create a new state variable, v1. V1, reset it low. And after R.F, we can raise V1. And then we're going to put uh, the downgoing transition on V1 after L.E up. And so what this does now is uh, when V1 is low, we simply uh, lower R.F. And when V1 is high, we lower L dot E before allowing R dot F to be lowered here. OK, save that and rerun. And we've solved all conflicts. 